Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass here and welcome to Sea Shells, a horror game about trying to survive multiple days within some weird lighthouse. Hmm. I suppose we have to go into the lighthouse to kind of start the game, but... I will kind of look around, get my bearings. It's kind of a little eerie, actually. Not like a, a spooky way, but more like a dreamlike way. Just the fog in the distance. I've, like, I've had many a dream. Where I'm near some like isolated tower, and just it's just fog in the distance. And it's just like a, it's just a little unsettling kind of thing. I guess we're gonna go in. There is a bed. There is a clipped through book. I've been afraid my entire life of failure and the slow realization that I had wasted every chance at happiness, of abandonment and other people realizing how little I had to offer them, of regret and how it would curdle me to something brittle, sour, and alone. Sometimes I felt good after confronting my fears, but mostly it felt like each time took a little more energy to face. Energy which never came back. So I built a cage for myself, locked myself inside, and swallowed the key. And I stayed there for days and months and years, mind withering and collapsing in on itself. But at least all the what-ifs remained only those. Rather than becoming concrete realities to pile on top of each other until I was crushed into powder. Until the day my uncle came to my self-made prison, until the day he told me about this place, how he had transformed him, could transform me. Very dramatic. So we're gonna go to the... Ooh. Makes me a little bit nauseous. I would hope you do not have claustrophobia. Cause that PS1 texture is, uh... It's probably purposeful in this, but in the old days it was from certain tech limitations, but the way it's kind of warping as you're going up, it's giving me a real... Give me like a little nauseous effect. And so that whole dreamlike thing I was mentioning. Boy, we're going way up, aren't we? Oh well, wait, there's a door here. Well, you're not even turned on, are you? Well. Things seem fine. I guess. Is there something you want me to do? Just light it? with my soul, apparently. <laughs> well, it's working. Hmm. Not much changed aside from that. Well, let's just race on down. Oh god, that, that warping effect is even worse when you're sprinting. Holy cow. <laughs> hmm. Well then, things seem all right. Ah. Do 
do we go back to the boat? Or do we just kind of like look around, chill? The boat is old and worn. Splinters covered in a salty crust will result in painful scratches if not careful. Hmm. Well, I guess that's kind of it. We just go to sleep. Uh, are we on a different level? God, it's pitch black down there. Is every night it's gonna like go and never. S well, it's locked. Damn. The same sights. It's just pitch black out there. Shouldn't the light be on? Maybe I don't want to go out there just yet. Hey. Groundhog Day thing going on here. Look at that, that's a pretty cool effect going for the transparency of the texture. Do I see anything weird going on? Looks fine to me. Something's inside. Or is that me? It's in myself, hearing myself scream out. Mentally, that is. Nothing yet. Can we go outside now? No. So I guess we just go to bed. Our work here is done. So we've gone for the night. And the door opens. Black goo? My uncle had been a source of mystery for as long as I could remember. My family sometimes spoke about how when I was very young, he had suddenly vanished without a trace, only to reappear several months later with a drastically altered personality. Before the disappearance, he had been awkward and uncertain, prone to spending all of his time locked alone in his house. But once he returned, he was confident, gregarious, and full of life, the type of man others instinctively gravitated towards. The difference was so severe that my family were initially wary, but like all things, this unease faded over time as they became acclimated to his new and likable personality. However, no matter how many times they questioned where he had been, all he had given gave in response was an odd, knowing smile that made his eyes gleam brightly. Eventually, everybody stopped asking. Everybody but me. Does that mean was something here and like it left a note that's like its remnants or something? It's ectoplasm. Of course, if it's a physical being, it could just be slime. Let's go up. Let me see if the light's off. Cause maybe we have to. Oh god. I'm not kidding when I say this is like it's like giving me some kind of fisheye effect. Maybe we have to, like, light it every time? 
giving it, we give it a little bit of ourselves every time. And it becomes night. No, it's more like evening, right? Because like morning, evening, and night. Anyway, let's just go to our bed. Now I want to see if the bed shifts another floor up. God, I hear that moaning. Okay. One. Two. I'm right. It's shifting up every time. Get a little closer to the light. That moaning is getting louder. I'm not sure what's a fret. Can we see anything out here now? Huh. I don't hear the moaning when I'm not in the lighthouse. Uh uh. Let's just go to bed. So we've probably shifted again, or are about to anyway. Next time we flip the lighthouse is when it'll shift again. Black like goo. With a boat. Boat's gone. Lost within the muffled seas looms a darkened tower bright. To cleanse the soul of fear's disease, feed your cage into the light. Keep the monolith appeased. Tend to its six howling nights. Sails away a newborn. Free, but for new to spread the right. Uh. The boat. Question it. We don't question things here. It simply is. It just it is what it is. An ancient bed frame with a thin moldy mattress. The light at the top of the tower needs to be activated before resting. So tend to it for so many nights. Light my darkest hour. Or maybe not so dark, it's kinda during the day. Well, let's just go to bed. I don't think anything new... Well, one of these days something new is gonna happen and it's gonna catch us off guard. That's how it be. Coughing. Stuff is kind of getting... Sounds like a, a whale. 
some weird ways. See if I spawn anything. No, see, it cuts out if I go out there and I have the light on. Ah, oh, what another wonderful morning in the lighthouse where the bed keeps going up higher and higher magically. There's a lot of black goo around now. <laughs> the boat's still in the thing. <laughs> Here we go. This ordeal has been much harder and stranger than I initially expected. Every night an ungodly chorus of abominations emerges from the sea to gather around the base of the tower and attempt to frighten me into fleeing with their incessant gibbering and gurgling. Were it not for the cleansing power of the light, I would have vanished from this place on the second morning. It seems to pull the weakness from me each time I touch it. I told you. I am left feeling serene, calm, and like I can fight through the rest of this challenge with a sense of clarity and purpose. I will not give up. Not this time. Wait, is there more than one boat? Boat? Did the boat shift? I swear the boat was more towards the left. It's one, one active boat. Time to go for my... Dizzying run up the stairs. Get my cardio for the day. And then back to sleep. Punching that. They want in. The rats in my mind are scratching at the walls. It's like Castlevania, isn't it? The morning light kind of like purges the darkness. I forgot how the line goes. I know the first part is it's a horrible night to have a curse. <laughs> a new day. Hey, wait, this is inside. I'm exhausted. The walls of the tower have started to constantly shift ever so slightly in a pulsing rhythm, making a faint noise which sounds like a beating heart full of wet granite. The soft grinding causes my hair to stand on end. I can no longer sleep without the calming effect provided by the light. Disastrously, just as I had decided to abandon this accursed ordeal, my boat has vanished. Likely taken by the sea demons in the night, I have been trying to devise a means to escape, but the incessant grinding sound is an invasive presence that dissolves my ability to focus properly. I need to get out of this place. It will drive me to madness before I can complete the rite. Better to return home a failure than a lunatic. Hey! Is- is the water right there? Hey! We're sinking!
Maybe let's not open that. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh crap, they can get in through the windows. The water's high enough. Yeah, it's right there now. Bad. It's gonna be a little bit interesting night. Horus rised again. It's rising at the rear of the bed. Yeah, like, it is kind of pulsing, you see? I feel like there's more of them out there now. Hey! Wait, there's things out there! Those hands! Going away as the light passes over him. But then they just come right back. But we are not getting any good sleep tonight. Uh oh, the water caught up. The whole place is really pulsing now. Water's right here. It's the black goo. The true face of this terrible tower was revealed to me last night through a dream. In this vision, I rose from my bed and descended the staircase for what seemed like hours. Far, far below the surface of the ocean, and yet further into the depths of the earth itself. As I continued spiraling down, the constant pulsing sound in the shifting tower gradually changed in quality from the grinding of stones to something more biological and more wet. After what seemed like an eternity, the stairs ended and I emerged into a small room filled by a giant rotten, still-beating heart almost three times my height. It dangled from the ceiling via a network of tree trunk thick arteries that glowed with uncanny brightness. Gazing at this monstrosity with his back turned to me was the figure of a man silhouetted against the pulsing light. As I suddenly took in the ghastly scene, he slowly turned towards me to reveal a familiar face. It was my face. He walked towards where I stood, frozen in place, clasped my shoulders, and whispered, Father. Then the sickly light of the tower burst from his eyes and mouth and burning gushes as I screamed as it tore me apart. I did not know what is going to happen to me or what my uncle's true purpose was in sending me here, but I am more frightened than I have ever been in my life. And finally, I could not run away. Very weird. So what happens then? Like, the wires could be pretty much just up to the, uh... The lighthouse?
I'm now I'm the one emerging from the damn water. God, this is some This is some stuff all right. What if I just, what if it's just like another perspective, like I'm still sleeping up here? Looks like it's getting a little tighter, right? What? <laughs> Wait, it's uh... Okay, this is this is like a Junji Ito manga. I see. I see what must be done. Now, is this a new day? Let's check outside. Because there's no bed anymore. I think the boat moved too. I saw the boat in front of that one window. Oh no, there's just a million boats. Never mind. Baby? I don't see a baby. Did I walk back into the- can I walk into the blood? I can. It would be foolish to swim into the void. I would think so. Some like the boats are like making a stairs going up, see it? Like, I hear a baby, but I don't see a baby. Okay, here we go. I don't know what I did, but I did something. I think I am a baby, because I feel really short, and there's a guy on the boat. Is that me from earlier, or is that... Huh. I also move slow. Oh God, I am a baby. Hi, buddy. Somehow it feels like I'm getting shorter by the minute.
Is this all water? Is. No oh, crap. Kind of look like they hands from human Nikki. The handwritten letters were scrawled and spewed clumsily across the pages. This is to be my final entry. Try to avoid feeding myself to the light on the sixth and eighth final evening. May the night last for five weeks before I finally gave in. Five weeks locked inside, listening to the mournful screams of those pitiful creatures outside as the bricks around me pulsated. Five weeks without the blessed void of sleep to give me respite. So I finally gave in and let it feed on my terror one last time. The tower has ceased pulsing, the ritual is finished. All I can hear are the soft sounds of the waves as I watch the man with my face slowly drift away on this boat and fade into the mist, starting his long journey back towards all I've ever known and loved. In this terrible act of creation, the light has stolen something vital from me, and my body has already started breaking down. Black ooze leaks from all orifices in my face, and two of my fingers on my writing hand have softly collapsed inwards to reveal the pungent liquid gushing from within. I can feel my bones softening, gravity starting to press on me as it never has before, and I fear that if I do not soon join the other victims within the depths of the ocean, I will quietly slump into a puddle and never move again. Maybe these pages can serve as some kind of warning, but I doubt it. By the time anybody reads this, they are already doomed. Whoops. I'm so, so sorry. Whoops. We're at the abyss now. I'm just gonna... I guess I'm just gonna crawl towards one of these hands. Scary. Seashells. By the seashore. So, I actually think that's it for this game, Seashells. So, I guess it was kind of a... It's, always, it's kind of an overused term, Lovecraftian. I guess you could say it's Lovecraftian. I don't like using it every time, because I feel like it's just kind of like a cheapening of the term. But it seems to be like... Just like it, it was just... Um, I don't think we're the ones that wrote them in the notes, obviously. It's what you're reading, and it's just like, if you read this, it's already too late. So on and so on. So, I don't know if it's a ritual. Well, it says it's a ritual, but I don't know if it's a... It's a very specific ritual. I don't really quite know when we really went out here, per se. But it's just one of those things where... It's a little surreal, it's a little eerie, it's a little very unknown, and our protagonist did not meet a good end. Like some doppelganger replaced him or something or whatever, or maybe it's symbolic. Uh, I don't think it's symbolic though, I think it's literal. Unless it's symbolism for a descendant of madness, and then the, the one leaving is perhaps your other, your sanity, or your actual, your personality that's going to kind of act in your stead as you kind of regress into yourself. That's the only other way I can interpret it. It's a symbolic story. But I think it might just be literal, like just a mysterious kind of weird, kind of very mysterious thing. So, nothing too much quite happens into it, but I did actually like it. I feel like, it, you know, it is just you walk and you read the notes similar, yeah. But it did have a bit of a little bit of atmosphere, and the final kind of like scenes there, I think, were um, kind of poignantly uh, chilling in a way. I think just Descend into the Abyss in itself is a kind of powerful imagery. It's like if you play Sub... I think it's Subnautica. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway. It's like you play like that and you go towards the end of the map, um, and there's just an abyssal drop. It just goes on forever, and they, they have some, some Leviathans there that hopefully kill you before you fall for eternity. But just that kind of drop off into blackness, I feel like it's enough to kind of like get people going, ooh. But yeah, it's not like stylistic uh, kind of short indie indie horror game here. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Seashells. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.